the thoughts there of some members of the public. But it's not just in the UK where politicians' pay and the perks of the job are grabbing the headlines. Anne-Marie Tomczak is in the world's newsroom and can tell us how the issue is viewed in other countries. Anne-Marie. Hi Anita, welcome to the World's News and we're here on the fifth floor and this is where 27 different language services work. Behind me here my colleagues from the African service are still busy at work. But uh, it, the issue of politicians pay is one that is universally debated all over the world and we've had lots of conversations about that today and we just want to reflect the global take. I'm joined by Samantha Barry who is an Irish journalist with BBC World and Valeria from the BBC Mundo service. Samantha, just to start to you closer to the, across the pond. Uh, politicians' pay rarely leaves the, the newspaper headlines in Ireland. No, not at all. It's, and it's a big issue in Ireland. And one of the reasons why is on the global scale, Irish politicians do pretty well. So a politician, in a member of Dáil Éireann, or the Irish equivalent of an MP, get, gets paid €92,000, or the equivalent of eighty thousand pounds. Huge salary. Huge salary. But it's often not the salary that gets questioned and put under scrutiny and becomes an issue for public resentment, but rather what's seen as very generous allowances and expenses. And what's interesting to note is that their current level of what they're paid it's a dramatic decrease from what they were paid in boom time in, in Celtic Tiger Ireland. They took a large, large pay cut in 2010 along that went along with public sector spending across the board. Okay, so you mentioned boom times. We can't um, have this conversation without mentioning former Taoiseach Bertie Ahern and the pay that he used to get. In 2007, he was one of the best paid politicians in the world. He was paid the equivalent of 265,000 uh, pounds a year and that made him better pay, better paid than the US president. Which is unreal. And um, we've had a massive response to this on uh, our BBC Facebook page. We put the question to our followers and within a few hours we got over 2,000 comments. Now some of those comments coming in, Gabriel Martin wrote to us from Brazil and he said, here politicians are absurdly overpaid. They're incompetent, underworked and should be replaced urgently. Another person wrote in, Daniel Kaplan from the Czech Republic, he had another view. He said, I would try to pay politicians more. That way they'd appreciate their jobs more. Tina Allen Cosella got in touch from the US and she says our politicians are grossly overpaid for the incompetent work they produce. And finally, Cyrus Kajiji from Uganda wrote, ministers here are overpaid while people starve and have no access to clean water. So people feel extremely strongly about that. Valeria, you're from Argentina and people, the sentiment there is quite strong as well, isn't it? Yeah, it is. There was a very heated debate a few months ago when MPs and senators decided to increase their own salary by 22%, which was a percentage that was well above the average that the government was hoping to get in terms of pay rises nationally to be able to control inflation in the country. And the matter becomes even worse when you look at the actual figures. The minimum wage at the moment in Argentina is about $500, and this politicians are getting paid $7,000 a month plus $2,000 in allowances, which is money for which they are not accountable. They can, they can use that in reserved expenses, as they call it. So overall, they earn 18 times more than a regular worker at the moment. And what about this undisclosed expense that politicians can have? Well, this has been in place since the 1950s, and then there has been numerous attempts to change this law, which basically gives them money to things like travelling, for example, or using on consultancy, various things that they don't have to say how, how that money is spent. They have, for example, 40 tickets a year to go back to their provinces that if they don't choose, they can change into money and adapt to their salary. So there's been numerous attempts to change it, but they haven't succeeded. Valeria and Samantha, thanks so much for joining us. Well, you can get lots more. Get in touch with me. I'm on Twitter at amtomshack, and there's lots more on the BBC website, bbc.co.uk slash news. Anne-Marie, thank you very much. Anne-Marie Tomczak there in the World's Newsroom.